Hello and welcome to the first episode of Jerome's Comic Book Show. I'm Jerome, of course, and today I'm going to be reviewing Spider-Gwen Most Wanted. Now, first off, I don't know if the name of the show is going to forever be Jerome's Comic Book Show. I just haven't come up with anything else that I like, and I wanted to do this before I kept thinking about it and then just gave up on it. So, here we go. Alright, so first off, I want to say that I really, really like this book. I read it in about two days. I believe it is a semi-sequel to um, Spider-Verse number two, which I haven't read and I actually kind of suggest you do read that before you get into this book because there's a lot of stuff between Spider-Gwen or Gwen Stacy and Peter Parker that goes along through this book. Like the main story, like there's villains and stuff here and there, but the main story is her and the whole um, city blaming her for the death of Peter Parker. Spoilers death of peter parker throughout this whole book throughout this whole review there's gonna be spoilers and i hate to call it a review it's more just me talking about the comic book um but yeah throughout so throughout the book so i'm gonna give a quick little thing it has part of the page i don't know if it's the whole issue or not uh but it has part of the story of spider verse number two and it shows like a little bit of gwen stacy getting bit by the spider a little bit of what happened to peter parker he became the big lizard i don't know the lizard's name um, that he, like, I don't know if they changed it or what, but he became that big legend, like, from Amazing Spider-Man, the movie, and, like, you know, the Spider-Man villain. He became that, and throughout a cu- couple things happened, and then he ended up dying, and they see, uh, Spider-Gwen leaving the scene. Actually, Martha sees her leaving the scene, too. So, Martha, um, and everybody else, actually, it's not Martha, it's Aunt May. I'm stupid, that's Superman's mom. Um, Aunt May sees, um... Uh, when Spider Gwen leaving the scene, so she starts blaming. She's collecting all these newspapers and like blaming everybody. Thinks Gwen Stacy, or not? I guess they don't know it's Gwen Stacy. They call her Spider Woman. They think she is a villain and like everybody kind of hates on her. So it's the, this comic book is about her redeeming herself to the town, which now that I'm thinking about it, she doesn't even really do towards the end. Like she saves things, people here and there and does stuff. So like there's a couple people, but like overall, they still kind of see her as a vigilante and that like, she needs to be stopped. But what's cool is in the prequel thing that they show, the thing from Spider-Verse 2, they show her revealing herself to her dad. So in the book, like her and her dad are having issues. Like she's kind of avoiding him and she doesn't want to talk to him and all this, this stuff's going on between them. Meanwhile, she's trying to fight the Vulture because uh, Matt Murdock, the d- Daredevil, which I don't think he's Daredevil in this universe. I think he's just Matt Murdock, the lawyer. He's working with Kingpin. He's sending Vulture and sending people people after Spider-Woman and after her dad and all this stuff, which I think was actually a cool little spin on him. Like, he plays a pretty good villain uh, in this comic book. Now, one thing I really want to see after reading this book, I want to see a Spider-Gwen now, it's probably the Spider-Verse comic. I want to see that as a movie, but, but a little bit of stuff in this in it. Because, like, okay, imagine this. So, we have Andrew Garfield, and we have Emma Stone. as And Emma Stone is uh, Spider-Gwen. And Andrew Garfield is just Peter Parker. Imagine a movie where she is Spider-Gwen, and he is Peter Parker, and he really wants to be like Spider-Gwen. He envies her. He just wants to be special. He wants to be a superhero. Imagine that movie, and he ends up becoming a villain. Ends up becoming this giant lizard because he's mixing with chemicals and all that, and she has to take him down. Imagine if Sony did a solo, like, Spider One movie, and then they just started, like, getting, like, weird with it. Like, I know they have a deal with Marvel and they're doing that stuff, but imagine if they did a side project. It's a completely different universe. They can maybe even add the multiverse in these movies, and they can add connect that later. I don't know. But that'd be so. I, I love the cast of the Amazing Spider-Man one and two. I'm I, imagining like when I read this book, I imagined Emma Stone as Spider Gwen. Like it to me, she was just perfect. So I I would love to see that as a movie ever. Which the way stuff's going now, I it wouldn't surprise me if in like five ten years we have a Spider Gwen movie coming out, even if it's not connected to all these other things. I think that'd be pretty awesome. One other cool part I really liked about the comic is that there's one part, I think it's the very first time Vulture shows up, Gwen Stacy is battling the Vulture, and he, she like, she's kind of kicking his ass, and then he ends up grabbing her and he drops her off a building, she falls, hits her head, and she's unconscious, and when she wakes up, she doesn't know how she got to this area, and because she was in the Spider-Verse, she's seen every Spider-Man and woman, like, ever, so she's seen Spider-Ham. So she starts hallucinating him with her. But I've 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 just kind of recently gotten into comics. Like I've I've watched a ton of the movies. I've read things here and there. But like I've just started purchasing like the 
the, all the comics. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool seeing Spider-Ham. I've never read anything with him before in it. And there's this one part, he, he's eating a corn dog, and it's all hallucination. He's eating a corn dog, and he's like, oh, wow, I can't believe no one ever told me corn dogs were so good. And she's like, can we really not do this? And she's like, I know this is a hallucination, but do we have to go on to cannibalism? And he's like, it's not cannibalism. If it's cannibalism, I'd be eating Porky Pig right now. Uh, there's like little funny jokes in it here and there that I really love. And I love, and again, I don't know if they do this in Spider-Man comics. I'm assuming they probably do. But I love that, like, she's also a lot like Spider-Man when she makes jokes while she's fighting people, which I love. That's written perfectly. Um, but she curses and stuff while she fights. Like, it seems so much more real because she's a teenage girl doing stuff. She's fighting guys and, like, making jokes here and there. But, like, she'll get hit by someone. She'll be like, what the fuck? And they don't spell out fuck, but they have it, like, so you know what she's going to say. Um, I really like stuff like that in the book. And then also, in this comic book, she's also in a band that... She was in it in the Spider-Verse in the beginning of this book. She leaves the band and towards the end she gets back into it. But she's in a band called the Mary Jane. So she's in a band with MJ. So it's also kind of cool. It connects her to that. And I don't know. This, this book is very interesting. There's also a really good part, I believe, in chapter four. Because I think it's right before the end. Of Gwen Stacy and Aunt May. Just they're talking. Because she wanted to tell her that she was Spider-Gwen. She was going to reveal it because she felt terrible. She kind of blames herself for Peter Parker's death because the whole town did. And it's her and Aunt May talking, and Aunt May is, like, saying, like, she sort of, in a way, says, I don't think Spider-Gwen did this. I think there's something else that happened to him. And she talks about how, tells her how Peter Parker was totally obsessed with Spider-Gwen. Like, every day, him and Aunt May would get clippings of it, and she just did it because he loved Spider-Gwen. So they would get newspaper clippings of anything, like any sightings of Spider-Gwen, and they'd put it together, and they'd, like, scrapbook it. So then when Peter Parker died, Aunt May still did that. And she said she could tell Spider-Gwen was trying to redeem herself for that. And that's made her kind of feel bad, because she's like, I don't know if Spider-Gwen really killed Peter Parker. I don't think she did. And there's, like, little stuff like that that I really liked. Like, it really got me into the characters. Also, the Punisher is in this book, and he's pretty cool. He's a cop in this one. He's fucking ripped. He's giant. He's pretty cool, though. He doesn't do, like, any big, big Punisher things. He fights Spider-Gwen a little bit. She puts him in the hospital, like... But it's still cool. I like how, like, Punisher's in this. Uh, Matt Murdock's in this. Uh, Foggy Nelson's in this. MJ. Like, there's so many people, like, so many characters in this, but it's in a different universe, or Gwen Stacy Spider-Man, that I really enjoyed it. And also, her outfit is just amazing, like... I love the look of her outfit because it looks so homemade, but it also looks like so cool too. I, I really enjoyed that. So again, I don't like calling this a review, so I don't think I'm going to give it a number rating. But if I had to give it a number rating, I'd probably give it a four out of five because I don't like to say it, anything's like, but I don't want to say it's a perfect comic book because there's probably, there's things that I could add, like, I really want to see Spider-Gwen interact with Spider-Man, which I'm sure that's happened before or is going to happen, whatever. But I really, really enjoy this book. It ends to be continued. I'm totally going to buy the next and the rest of Spider-Gwen that comes out. And because of this book, now I want to get uh, Gwenpool because now they started Gwenpool because of how popular this was with Gwen Stacy being, like, big characters. Hope they continue that on, do, like, Captain Gwen and she's Captain America or something. They just keep making her all different Marvel characters. To me, that'd be really cool. I'd just switch it up. Thanks for watching the first episode of Drums Comic Book Show. If you liked this show, write down in the comments below that you liked it. If you didn't like it, tell me to go back to sucking at video games and open up toys. See you next time. All right, so. All right, Nick, now, the boop. <laughs> what? He's trying to say, now Nick's playing Alien, but it came out, Nick, knack, noop, noop. Nick, knack, Nick boop. Is, Nick is playing Alien Isolation now. now I, thought I got a feeling he's not gonna get as scared in the game as I do. I don't know. For some reason, it still seems way darker than when I play. Yeah, how come? Got an, oh my god, I think there's an alien right up there. Either that or I'm just seeing things. All right, so. So we made, before we get in this, we made a rule. Because we both won all of them, whichever ones we grab, that's the ones we get to keep. Like, unless, like, if I get two of the same exact ones and he, and, like, we'll do whatever, but, like. Whatever we, we pick, keep. we So get. I'm gonna grab first. Since I have in the box. Jump I'm, in. I'm ready because I'm interested to see who your top ten are. All right. Number 10, <laughs> Daniels. Wow. Yeah. Cedric Daniels. Cedric Daniels is my number 10. 